In this video I will explain what a narrative review is, including its benefits and drawbacks with respect to a systematic review, and we will also take a look at the typical outline of a narrative review. My name is Arjan de Host, welcome to this video on a narrative literature review as part of the video series in literature reviews. First of all, let's look at the aims of a narrative review. First and foremost, it is about identifying and summarizing what has been previously found in literature. That is, because of the huge amount and rapid rate of publications, we have an abundance of evidence. Summarizing it is very important for the scientific commu community to get an overview of the state-of-the-art developments in that field. As a result, new study areas will be identified, which is very good for the development in this field of research. The main benefits of a narrative review uh, are summarized here. The first one is that you don't need to aim at one research question. You can actually aim at multiple research questions, and they might even be a bit more loosely defined than for a systematic review, which gives you some room to play. A narrative review might even be an opinion of an expert in the field. The selection criteria are not necessarily even always clearly reported. Um, it's also not so. It's not necessary. Uh, this provides the author with flexibility regarding which articles to include and which to exclude. Although be aware here that this involves a major risk of selection biases. The narrative review and the process to get there is, so to say, much less strictly defined than for a systematic review. This also results in the narrative review being relatively easy to write. Well, besides these benefits, of course, there are also drawbacks. And these drawbacks can be mainly seen with respect to a systematic review. So, if we don't have a very clearly defined research question, which is not necessarily the case for narrative reviews, um, actually doing the research or doing the, making the review gets more difficult. It, it might even result in, in a lack of focus. Actually, overall, the freedom that we have in a narrative review results in drawbacks on transparency, replicability, and also methodological quality, with all accompanying risks to that. So, the selection bias, that's one. No clear inclusion or exclusion criteria. Uh, so this makes interpreting the results quite harder for the researcher, but also for the reader. This also means that studying a narrative review for you as a reader might be difficult regarding to drawing conclusions and uh, putting the systematic review, or sorry, putting the narrative review in context with other reviews. Typically, the outline of a narrative review, um, it, it, it's not defined, actually. Um, but what you see here is a typical outline of a narrative review. So, we start with the introduction. It, it includes relevance, rationale, it provides a structured overview of the context and, of course, the scope of the review. The second part is kind of the methodology section. It is about the literature search the strategy in an exclusion criteria, list of research included in the research. Uh, all of these are not mandatory, but it is highly recommended to include them. Within the central body of the narrative review, we are actually looking at the summarizing and synthesizing upon all the included research articles. And in the end, in the conclusion, all findings are summarized in a to-the-point manner and a short piece of text. This video was part of the literature review series. And thank you for watching and uh, also see my other videos on the literature review process.